When you're a kid, you don't really know that many occupations. I don't know if I really knew the answer to that question for a very long time. Ooh, ballerina. <laughs> to be a ballerina. <laughs> you know, I was going to be an Olympic gymnast, but that was pretty much out by the age of seven. <laughs> uh, I really thought I wanted to be a professional baseball player, and that seemed like a realistic goal at the time. I wanted to either be a teacher or a doctor. I wanted to be an astronaut, but then I realized that you would have to be in enclosed spaces. <laughs> of course, I wanted to be a rock star. Uh, and then I was thinking, you know, realistically, that's maybe not the life that I want to live, that of a rock star. I wanted to be like the first woman president too, but it was also pretty clear early on that I didn't like conflict or arguing with people. So probably anything under the sun. Why did I come to UW-Stevens Point? Well, number one, um, I think it's a fantastic institution. Uh, and I was previously working at, a, at a, another university um, in another part of the country. Uh, and the first thing that caught my eye was just, it seemed to be there was, was a real quality uh, sort of experience here. And that drew me to it. When I was looking for a position at a college, I really wanted a college that had a small feel, a small college town, um, not necessarily a small school, but had that kind of family um, friendly atmosphere, not like real um, competitive or anything like that. From some other place and uh... UWSP was a little bit behind, and they were um, just at the point of like doing phone interviews. And I called up, I called up someone here, and I said, "Hey, you know, it sounds like a really good match for me. Um, if you could just tell me if I'm kind of on the short list." We like Wisconsin. We, you know, it sounds like a just a nicer place to live, right, than than Southern Missouri. And um, yeah, I like the people here, and um, it was a good offer. So yeah, so looking for this kind of school. We liked the size of city too. Didn't want a really big city. Knew of the uh, the Wisconsin system at the time, and um, the program here at that point in time it was a traditional radio television program, and uh, that that kind of intrigued me a little bit. Uh, and of course, since that time, we've, we've evolved quite a bit. Um, and we sort of de, it isn't that we've de-emphasized radio and television per se, but we've, we've gone more towards a media studies orientation. Um, but that, that sort of intrigued me. So UWSP hit a number of my um, interest areas. Um, I also felt like this position let me do a lot of things that other positions would let me do. So I can do kind of theory and criticism, but also production. Um, that's They're very flexible about that. And that's very forward thinking on their part. So I really wanted to have a hand in that. And also I, I felt like I had a chance to really contribute, that they were really responsive to me. It's the place that was looking for me, you know, for what I did um, and uh, and my attitude towards students and all that. It was just a good fit. Um, and I knew that when I came here. What I like about UW-Stevens Point, first of all, uh, is the students. Hey, I love the students. Uh, I, I think the student population um, is, it's a very grounded population. They're very motivated and hardworking. Um, they're also very warm and encouraging outside of class. You get to know students. You have them in more than one class. I love being in the classroom. I love interacting with uh, all of my students. UWSP students are really the primary reason. Um, so when I came around my campus, campus visit, I was able to really interact with people and it was incredibly refreshing. Uh, second, the faculty here is wonderful. Um, I love working with uh, everyone in the department and within the college. I think we've got a remarkable group of teachers um, and I don't foresee any real problems, which is, I think, good for our students. 
I like knowing most of my colleagues that are around the university. Uh, number three, the community of Stevens Point has a lot more to offer than you would expect um, from uh, a town this size. The, the role of being a professor is rapidly changing. Balancing all of the things that we have to do. Um, because if it were just teaching, if it were, if it were just teaching and grading, that would be amazing. That would be a dream job. <laughs> you know, we're asked to be, you know, administrators in different capacities. We're asked to do boring paperwork, a lot of budgetary stuff that we're not really trained to do. Um, we, we're, we're not having enough time to do, like, you know, the research and the teaching to the full support. So there's, time is a massive issue. Probably time management is my... <laughs> <laughs> biggest thing because to some extent you're your own boss right which is great but I think this 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 and this should happen and these things all take this much time and and I run out of time I can never work a half an hour even on a single thing because I'm constantly being interrupted to try to solve other people's problems <laughs> so I mean the three areas that we concentrate on as professors are um, teaching scholarship and service so it's balancing those three areas that we're expected to excel in is really the hardest part for me so developing the courses certainly can be um, a challenge then delivering that information in a way that a room full of people who all learn in different ways can all understand and grasp it. That can be a challenge. Finding that balance of um, lecture and activity. I don't want a lecture, but I like hearing myself talk. Um, and I want the students to do an activity, but it has to be activity that uh, promotes growth in their knowledge, it, not just for having them to do something, right? Uh, it has to be a, a meaningful activity try and find ways to inspire people to be passionate about it and um, yeah, to, 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 to just feel like they've got the necessary tools to really succeed. And I think for the most part people do, but it's always tough to see some people struggle and feel like, ah, I'm trying, I can't help you, what's going on? That's really hard, it's really heartbreaking. I think the most rewarding part of teaching is when you you come into a class and you plant a little seed, uh, of, of a little nugget of information, um, and then you, you sort of send students out and then they come back and they thought about it and you see this sort of light bulb go off and you can tell that they've, it's in some way, it's actually changed their life, it's at least changed the way that they interact with the world. Seeing the students understand and grow and develop and that kind of thing. So um, sometimes it's just you're in the office working with somebody and um, oh, oh, this makes sense now. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, students who, um, who I feel like I've been able to teach them something, um, who have surpassed me in knowledge about my field, um, who have gone on to do great things. I really like feeling um, helpful. I mean, I, I like feeling as if my job makes a difference. Having that flexibility to make learning meanif meaningful and then having the camaraderie of all of these wonderful people around me. Seeing people succeed is amazing. Um, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not someone that would take like massive credit for any of that, but just being in the room with someone that's like genuinely excited and feeling like, I did it, like that's awesome. Um, it's so rewarding. Oh, these people that I helped to some degree, you know, get through their program and then go out and do these good things. Going on, they're getting jobs, they're doing exciting things, and I just get so excited for them because they're going out into the world and they're, they're, they're finding their own path. And that is just, it's, that's so, that's so rewarding and exciting. To know that, you know, you were this like one little tiny puzzle piece of their big educational achievement. Um, that's that's exciting. 
if one is interested in becoming a professor, it's a long road. You truly, truly have to love what you do. If that's really your, you know, if that's your interest, do it. My suggestion for anybody who wants to do this is talk to as many college professors as possible and get their perspectives on what the process is like. Find someone who's doing what you want to do and figure out how they did it and maybe just follow that plan. Make sure you are not paying for graduate school. Get a program, go to a program that is going to give you a stipend and pay for your tuition. One big piece of advice that I would give is that people should have um, a clear and sober analysis of the state of higher education. If you have persistence, um, it, you have perseverance, you have determination, you can make it through the PhD process. If anyone wants to do it, make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons for um, you know, your relationship to the classroom or the research um, I think would be really, really crucial. The only reason why you wouldn't pursue it is if you really didn't have that passion. Make sure you just really love your subject material. I mean, make sure you really love your field and that you have a passion for your field because maintaining that passion over a really, really long period of time is difficult. It's, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's, it's tricky. You have to be passionate about it. You have to be willing to really, really fight down, fight, uh, not lie down and uh, fight for it. Just make sure, make sure that you're into the idea of researching and that you like talking to people about the things that you love. And if that's true, then perhaps being a college professor is right for you.